I've got it now. I've got it now. Woohoo! I think I'm, I think I'm here now. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, two things went wrong. I will tell you what they are. First of all, um, so basically YouTube said that they couldn't um, do a live stream today, which was a lie because I'm here. Um, so I had to close the whole um, window and start over again. So that was the one thing that went wrong. And then because you have to tell your encoding software that you're going live and then you have to tell um, YouTube that you're going live. And I thought I told YouTube that I'm going live, but um, for some reason it didn't take my word for it. So I had to press the button again. But I'm here now. So um, yes. Thank you. I thought I, I thought I appeared somewhere else. So anyway, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, it's really nice to be here. I'm so glad I can um, I get the responses now that I'm. It, there's nothing worse than sitting here on my own in this room, staring at myself on the screen, and wondering who the hell can hear me, who the hell can see me, and um, am I even am I even here? So I thank every one of you, each and every one of you, every time I do these live streams for communicating with me and being there. I don't know what it would be like if it was nobody at the other end. So thank you so much for um, for all of you. Let's just see who is here. So we've got um, Diane. Hi, Diane. Um, hope you're all keeping well. Hi, Ross. Hi, Jane. Um, hi, Emma. Yes, Emma, I know you. Um, we had a conversation just before and I, I'm glad you're by my side. Um, hi, Sarah. Sarah Brown from Needlefelt in UK. Hi, Pauline. Um, Donna is here and I know there are a few others watching who um, obviously choose to remain silent and that's totally fine. I know we don't have Chandra today because she actually messaged me and she's working um, but she said she might just be able to um, say hi and I'm dreading to think where she might be when she says hi because as you all probably know she, she is actually um, a surgeon so um, hopefully it won't be in the OP. Um, <laughs> Like, yeah, anyway, um, it's really good um, to be here. Hope you all had a good weekend. Um, some people, like some of my members of the family, um, suffering a little bit from the lockdown fatigue. Um, it's not so much that they want to go out. Um, it's more about not knowing when they can go out. I think that might be something that um, we're all sort of um, getting a little bit restless about. If somebody just told us, OK, you've got to hang in there for another two weeks and then um, things will start to change. We all expect um, that it's not going to go from zero to 100, but there may be stages in between. But it's that kind of not knowing when things will change and to what extent. And I think um, hopefully somehow we're listening to the news on the radio this morning and um, I had my daughter with me in the car um, and um, they were on the news and she just caught a glimpse of it. And the new, they, on the news they said, yes, and um, so um, athletic people are able to go back to their sport and cafes. And she's like, yes. And I said, I think they're talking about Italy, <laughs> not the UK. And she's like, oh, no. So, um, yeah, it'd be good to, um, I don't know, just to know, I suppose. How, how are you all? Oh, Chandra is in the coffee room. Hello, Chandra. I can't wait to see you for real. It's going to be so nice. I'm, I'm so looking forward to seeing um, people for real again. It's I, I, I've always looked forward to meeting people, but I'm looking extra forward to seeing all these people that I haven't seen for so long and that I know are there. And, and so it's going to be really nice. Um, so, oh, yes. Yeah, so Chandra is saying, I just popped in to say hello. I'm actually in work at the moment. So, um, yes, um, lovely. Um, yeah, sorry, Emma, to panic you. <laughs> I did have a bit of a panic myself and I thought, no, I'm just going to switch everything off and on again. So hence I'm late. Anyway, so today um, we're picking up on a on a project that we did last summer, probably. And it was uh, one of our makers boxes. And I'll be totally honest. I think people were quite disappointed with this makers box. And that is because when you make these felt flowers, as everybody knows, you need felt and very little wool. So everybody who gets our makers boxes is used to getting stuff in there that like we have to literally sit on the box to um, close it. But um, on this occasion, um, there was few little wool in there, lots of felt, which is the um, which is the expensive thing. And I just want to say that all of our makers boxes are worked towards the same budget. So even if one appears to be 
um, less value for money. It definitely is not. We we set a budget and we stick to it regardless. We never have one that's worth um, less. So um, and when when on Friday, if you're around, tune in. What we're starting um, is a live stream that uh, is called Makers Boxes or Subscription Boxes Unwrapped. And this is where at the beginning of each month, if we can on the first of the month, we will open up the subscription boxes with the exception of the surprise box, though we will be looking at some past surprise boxes just to give you an idea of what there might be in there. And um, we'll open them up. And so you get an idea of what you're actually getting and um, and um, this Friday, I will um, show you a few techniques of how to make certain things about the um, that have to do with the fawn, because some of these techniques, um, like the legs, are a, a special way of making that legs that we have not featured in our um, tutorials and kits before. So that's another another way of um, um, a new technique to learn. So on Friday, that will happen at two o'clock, and then um, every month um, on the first of the month, if we can, we will open up the future or the current makers boxes for that month so you can have a look inside and you can see what you can make and how easy or difficult it might be. Anyway, today it's about felt flowers and this particular makers box didn't just have the water lily in there, it also had at the time the pansies in there which um, have proven to be a very popular kit and, and also just some um, sort of fantasy flowers or little daisies um, whichever you uh, wanted to make. And I've already had a word with um, um, Emma and she's going to put the instructions for the water lily and the um, pansies as well as the a little daisy flower um, on as a PDF on our website so you can just buy the instructions and the templates. Now the template for the water lily is um, basically the lily pad and then you have the flower shape and you make three of these so you cut um, these out from felt three times and then you also get on that um, particular instruction sheet you get the pansies and then um, just the petals for for general flower making these are really really easy to make and very effective they can be really colorful and they have a really um, certain structure straight away quite delicate as you can see all the flowers here in the background all of these they have been uh, made in exactly the same way whether you scale them up into large pansies or big daisies and they're um, such an amazing, when, when all of this is over, then uh, maybe you have a big garden party or maybe you don't, you're don't. you sick of the side of your garden, maybe you go somewhere else entirely, but you can decorate a room or a table or anything so fast with these flowers and the water lily is just another one of them. I absolutely love water lilies. Um, we've moved last year in August to um, a new place and we are so meant to take the water, a water lily off cut with me, but I forgot. And um, so we, we need to start over again, but we had the most amazing water lilies and that's what gave me the idea um, last year to make um, the water lilies. And I actually, some people say um, lotus or water lily and I had to look up the difference, what it is, and I've still got it open on my phone. So I will just read that to you because um, I thought that was interesting. I didn't know what the difference between a water lily and a lotus flower is, but you you probably know it. But the difference is in um, the... Biggest difference is the water lilies, um, and they're also called nymphaea species. Leaves and flowers both float on the water surface. So you see all of it. You see the flowers and the leaves and everything on there. Um, on the water's surface, while lotus, nilumbo species, leaves and flowers are emergent. So they're under the water until they, and then they come up together. So, um, or rise above the water surface. So there you go, they stick out even above the water. So that's the difference between a water lily and a, and a, a, a lotus, um, according to um, the internet. And um, so I'm gonna start with this. Let's just have a little look um, on, on the comments here. Um, oh, that's for Chandra, yes, we really do appreciate what you're doing. Um, 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 hi David and it's actually Ruth isn't it because uh, I know you communicate uh, um, through your husband so that's really lovely to have you here um, um, so oh Pauline thank you the boxes never disappoint of course they don't and um, oh and Anita you're saying that the little one has grazed you with a nap and so um, you made it today. Yay. Excellent. That's really good to hear. 
So let's get started. I, I follow, I started um, a little sort of um, system last time when I did the roses and um, clipping the wool to a piece of card and also um, um, labeling it and naming it. And I, I'm going to do this with the water lily as well. However, I have to make a massive big confession. I'm actually using a wool that I'm not meant to use yet. It's a new one, but it's just so nice. Look at this. This is actually neon pink, but don't tell anybody, especially don't tell Sophie that I'm using this already. <laughs> you can't buy it yet, but I can use it and you can look at it. It is really, really bright. Oh, makes my heart beat faster. So I'm going to, oh, if you want to see what a normal pink looks um, like next to it, I think you have to see the two next to each other to get how vibrant they are. And this will be available very soon, but you just have to sit patiently for a bit longer. And this is um, our bright pink that we already do, but I'm going to use this. Anyway, so I've got my template here. Um, first of all, I've got to cut around, quite boring cutting around the card. If any of you are um, familiar with Pam Duffy, she's got um, thousands of followers on, on YouTube. She's about 12,000 followers. She actually talks a lot about Etsy and how um, to um, to use Etsy. She's quite an expert on there. So if, you, if you're thinking of opening your, an Etsy shop, then um, watch her YouTube channel. But she often also um, does needle felting projects um, on a, in a live stream. Um, it's often on a Sunday evening at 4 p.m. So I watched her yesterday and it was really fun. She was needle felting an amazing elephant picture. But I think next time she is put, possibly doing the curled up fox from the maker's box. So if you want to see her do that. And what always amazes me, she has these really ambitious projects and she actually does them um, in in that hour or two hours that she's live on, on, um, on the stream. And she's really lovely. She's... Um, always very com complimentary about our product so we um we love to support her um and um hopefully you can tune in to her channel sometime right so that's um basically my water lily um template cut out and now um i'm, I'm ever so lazy when it comes to um um cutting corners i have got at the moment i should really have my needles in my pin cushion um there but I've got, I've got at the moment, I've got a, a um, this is a, a slightly off-white piece of felt. I've also got um, an, ap um, I call it apricot color, but it's actually, we call it peach. So this is our peach felt and they're just little off cuts that I could sort of find around the area. And then this is our piece of felt and we call this bubble gum. So you can buy all of this um, on our website, but if you've got felt at home, try it. There's no, um, yeah, nothing can be lost by, by just trying it. And instead of um, using a pen to draw around the outside, you can do this freehand, though even that is a little bit too scary for me. So I'm going to use some pins now. I'm going to pin this leaf um, template onto the felt so that it doesn't jiggle around as I'm cutting around it. Um, the reason why I'm not drawing on it is because, and I, I have to double check, I think on, um, on the instruction it tells you to use pencil. But um, having learned from experience, it's best to just pin it down with a few um, pins and then cut around it. Um, because with a water lily, you can see the top, but you can also see the bottom of the um, leaves. And if the if if you have a pencil mark on there, it probably doesn't look too clever. So I'm um, going to try it this way. I'm first of all cut my piece of felt a little bit more to size, so it's more manageable. And I'm going to cut three of these shapes out now. And um, whilst I'm doing that, perhaps we can all sort of just have a little chat and talk to each other. Or if you've got any stories to tell or if you want to know anything, ask a fire away, ask some questions. Um, I could actually pin a few sheets onto the template. That's something for the next one. I'm going to try two all at once. Like I said, I am. I, if there's a corner to cut, I will find it. Um, it it might um, actually take longer doing it that way, but I've got less preparation to do. So pull that out. If any of you've got any bright tips on how to um, cut around a template, just let us know. But I'm just using two pins. I could actually use more than two pins, but um, I'm terrible when it comes to doing things properly. 
always find some now working out that I'm just going to cut around the right side of each petal and now I'm going to somehow work around how I can just cut around the left side there speed things up a bit more that's it I loved seeing the roses that you um on some of you made anyway I just love it when you take these ideas on board and then you make something um, of your very own with it. It's just so nice to see that. And um, yeah, really lovely. Um, we've had um, quite a quiet weekend. We did have a bit of a sad thing happen that we uh, found a dead lamb in the in the field. In fact, the dogs found it. But um, yeah, it just sometimes happens, I suppose. Right, that's one set of um, the um, shape done. There we go. And now for the second one, I'm going to try two at the same time. Um, yeah, and then um, <clears throat> we found a stunned squirrel. That was another excitement. Um, so you know how squirrels, they, they often just sit there. They look like, well, this one just stayed like that. And it didn't move as we got closer. So you kind of thought, hmm, it's obviously alive because it's sitting upright like that. And... Um, and in the, in the end, the children just picked it up, like, put it in a box. And um, we just thought, oh, it looked like a really young squirrel. Put it in a box and just left it be. And then it, um, after a while, it recovered and um, and then just um, scurried away. And, um, yeah, we're pretty certain that we saw it later again. So it was absolutely fine. So something must have scared it or there was sort of talk maybe that it, I don't know. I just genuinely don't know what happened to it. Maybe it fell off a tree if it was a young squirrel and just bumped its head and something like that. I haven't got a photo to share with it because I wasn't actually there, but the description of my children was quite um, funny to hear. Anyway, I'm going to cut this a little bit smaller now. Now I'm using two felt pieces all at once and um, cutting around this now. This works as well. The great thing with these um, flowers on felt sheet is that you don't, you, it doesn't matter if the um, petals are not entirely perfect. And the reason for that is that in nature, there's no, not a single petal perfect. Sometimes they have a little bit missing. Sometimes one is bigger. Some Sometimes one um, curls more than another. So these templates are not symmetrically um, um, correct or, or perfect. There, uh, and so it doesn't matter if your cutout petals aren't um, that perfect either. And um, yeah, I think I've got the knack now of cutting around the template without drawing on it, pinning it together. And I've pinned two pieces of felt on top of each other, cutting around the template. And that seems to be working fine. <clears throat> Let's wait until I take it off um, the template and see what it looks like then. So... There's all these, and the reasons why the reason why um, when we did the makers box um, last year with the flowers, and we put sort of a fantasy flower in, is because all these little pieces of felt that you're cutting out between the petals, they're actually really great to uh, turn into small little petals. So don't chuck them away. You can make so many flowers um, with all of this afterwards as well. There's a, quite a commotion outside this door. I don't know if you can hear it. There must be a delivery coming. Um, it's nice commotion. It's not horrible commotion. It's just a noisy, noisy delivery man. There we go. Yeah, it's quite funny receiving deliveries at the moment because you're sort of like two meters away from each other. They put it down. You're not meant to sign anything. And then you, you basically pick it up. And um, when we get to work every morning and throughout the day, we have to um, we wipe everything down with... Um, um, disinfectant yeah we we actually wipe things down with disinfectant we don't drink it we don't inject it or anything else we use it for the right purpose wiping things down as it's meant to happen right would never occur to us to do anything else anyway there's our three um, flower um, shapes now so I've got my bubblegum pink I've got my uh, peach color and I've got the white um, this one is a slight off white we also um, we haven't got it in stock at the moment, but you could use um, a brilliant white as well. And what I do is, just so that um, we remind ourselves what that is, I'm just going to cut a little corner out of the felt pieces, 
pin them onto my um, onto my um, swatch or my sample sheet and I've got very squeaky scissors they're actually squeaking and um, and then we've got that for the future so I'm just stapling them onto here and then I'm gonna go a little bit closer up in a minute so this one is one is the um, peach I'll write that on there in a minute this one is the off-white and then oh, that one didn't like that this one is the bubblegum pink Let's see if we can make this work yeah that's it <clears throat> I'm just gonna write that on there so um, and then that will be available later I'll post that onto our Facebook page um, so you can um, remember what I've actually used and I think Emma is already working on uh, getting the instructions down as a PDF. So this is peach, this is off-white, and this is bubblegum. And it's um, it's the um, viscous wool felt sheet. Okay, so that's what we're using. If you have um, felt at home, try yours. We love this viscous wool felt because it's nice and strong, but it's also really thin. Um, it doesn't squeak. I don't like squeaky felt. And it um, it takes the wool and the needle really well. So let's get started. So we the, the um, water lily has got the lighter felt at the bottom than the next um, d darker felt um, further up. And then on the very top, it's got that um, bubblegum colored felt. And each um, petal or each um, base of petal we're going to colour in um, separately now. So I can see that some of them don't look quite so um, neat, but that's okay. I just can either adjust it now or just leave it because as soon as you start colouring it in, um, the, felt, the felt pieces will um, slightly, they, they will just appear differently. And for this very base one, I'm actually going to use some of this bright, lovely um, neon coloured wool we've I've also got some wool tops so this um, the berries wool tops works really well because you've got all these bright lovely colors in there and um, you can just tease the bits out that you want by just pulling um, wool out so um, for this one I could mix the really bright one to, just to um, soften the brightness a little bit so I'm mixing it so by um, pulling the fibers and putting the fibers on top of each other and um, and mixing them so that they become um, a nice sort of variegated mix and I, I actually want the felt to show so I'm not going to completely cover it um, this is why there's so little wool required um, and I'm just going to go a little bit smaller so you can see what I'm um, doing so I've got my oh god this looks so bright in this camera I'm going to put this to one side now I'm going to lie it down I just also have a little um, look what's going on here um, oh, oh um, Emma thank you for sharing uh, Pam Duffy's uh, YouTube page that's amazing um, oh <laughs> oh your mum's been um, resetting the router never mind you haven't missed anything other than me just gibbering on um, oh thank you Jane, oh, I, I tell you, if you if you lived in my house, I don't. I sometimes don't know if I should smile or just cry. A lot of the time, it's just oh, you always think, oh no, what's happened now? Oh no, what's happened now? And um, as soon as they run through the door and they say, Mom, Mom, like oh God, what is now happening? Um, yeah, they're funny stories at the time, but well, they're funny stories afterwards. But at the time. They can be, um, yeah, they can be a little bit nerve-wracking. So what you see me do now is I'm felting um, the wool onto this uh, petal um, and um, deciding just to put a little bit more on there just to um, make it a little bit brighter. And as you're felting it on, you need to remember to lift it off your um, felting mat as well because lots of the fibers will um, sink into the fo into the um, earth mat here as well and um, I'm gonna go around each and sing each single petal if you've got a multi-tool you can speed this bit of the work up loads so you can either use the prim multi-tool just stab it in goes much faster 
there. Or if you've got um, the um, seven needle felting tool, you can use that as well. It's a bit more noisy, but you can definitely use it. Remember to lift it off the mat because um, there's a lot of um, fibers being punched on there. Um, the um, seven needle felting tool, by the way, comes with um, fine needles and it, it works best um, if you use it either on the earth mat or if you've got a brush mat, which um, I thought I had one here, but I can't see it right now. But it works absolutely fine on the, um, on the earth mat. The um, prim needle felting tool comes without needles. Um, it takes up to seven needles too. The advantage is it has actually got a single needle um, tool in there as well. Absolutely love this one. It's so worth the investment. So you can use it just as a single tool. And um, you can use it separately. So you can have your six needles as it is now in here. And use that. It has got a nice um, grip. Um, not what's the word. Um, it doesn't slip. Uh, a slip free grip um this this white stuff here is ever so slightly rubbery so you you don't slip around on it and you can put it all the way into your into the palm of your hand if you struggle to um use your fingers this is this is really amazing there's so much umph behind it if you use it that way and you can put your single needle into the tool to now make it a seven needle felting tool and the nice thing about it is also it does stand on its um, own. It has got a, a pretty flat area there. It stands up. So and even when it tips over and it rolls because it's not completely um, um, the same width at one end to the other, it just rolls in a circle. So it'll just roll like that. So that I really love that um, that about it. And then um, to get it out, you just push that little blue button there pops out and then to store your needles you turn the whole thing around click it together really well and um, and it's completely safe you can't accidentally put your hand into the needles because it's completely they're completely hidden inside there um, I think if you poked your little finger all the way deep in you have to have quite a small finger you might be able to um, do damage but it's completely it's completely safe that way um, I know I keep going on about that tool but I can't I, I was actually quite cross with Prim that they um, kept that from me for so long um, because I love I love it so much so here I'm putting more onto the petals now I'm trying to keep within the petals so that the wool doesn't spill out over the sides I'm not too worried what's happening in the center of this because if you look at the construction of the flower a lot of it gets missed um, later on anyway because it's hidden by the top petal so it's only the the very very top where you've got to be a little bit more um, yeah a bit more um, careful of what, how you're putting it on the top and um, I really like it that these these petal shapes are sort of cur curving inwards I think that's really nice because that gives it a more natural look um, on here and I'm going go around the other petals now as well with that same mix to try and make it last so I don't have to mix another batch um, we've had uh, we've released our new kits um, the um, rainbow of hope gift pack and I'm, be, I'm delighted um, to say that we're posting loads of them out today and if you um, if you've missed it it's actually um, um, I don't know if I can bring it across. It's so nicely displayed here. I'll, I'll try so you can see it really close up. Let me just grip it and then you can um, see it. So it's this here. You get in there um, a full rainbow there with clouds. And then you get um, a lavender pouch. This is just totally lovely. Oh, I love the smell of this. Chocolate hearts, a nice um, tea bag organic herbal tea, two of our brooch pins, two felting needles and this white thing is a felting mat. You also get a little gift card um, which you can um, tell us what message you want to be put on there and we handwrite it. And you get a felt sheet 
there that makes two of this in fact it makes more than that three times the size of that picture um, or you can um, turn turn it into a little um, rainbow of hope brooch so either a picture you can make the picture bigger or you can just make lots of these bearing in mind you've only got two of the brooch pins um, the no so brooch pins this is what you get in this box box it comes in a really lovely pink, um, pink this is not pink blue large letter size box so it fits through the letter box and it looks nice on the outside as well and um, like I said we've, we've um, got loads of them ready to post out today so um, we've just worked on on having about a hundred in stock so hopefully they will all go and then we can uh, buy more um, supplies to make up even more they're really nice if you want to send somebody um, a little gift maybe something to do it's such a simple project it's really really simple so that people who've never even needle felted will be able to uh, make something whether it's a picture or whether it's um, a rainbow brooch and um, I just think sometimes you've got to say things with fluff say it with fluff <laughs> never never thought of that before but well, that sounds like a good idea idea say it with fluff so I've got to um I must remember that one Emma write that down that's really good say it with fluff okay right there we go um that gets a bit patched up here now but I think I'm ready with with that first um layer of the water lily stab it a bit more this tool again I'm just switching and sw swatching around um swatching is probably not even a word there's also somewhere around here a three needle felting tool you can use that as well let's try that there anything that speeds the work up is always welcome and um I'm going to leave it as that you're just literally painting these petals with a, a, a few um bits and pieces of wool and I'll put this to one side now and now I'm going to the next one which is this um peach color and I'm repeating the process by um, adding the same wool. You can also use a slightly different shade if you want to. Lotus flowers, they actually, they can, they vary from the really rich, rich pink to a paler pink. So it's entirely up to you how you may want to mix these colors. Um, I've just loved this neon color so much. I must, um, um, but I will use some of the other wool as well. So I've got our bright pink here. Um, a pale pink all of it can be mixed in and um, and turned into a nice new pink bright pink color and um, and then you color in every single petal in the same way as you did before again we don't need to worry too much about filling the hole of the center because uh, a lot of it will be hidden away from that top layer um, I'll just get that down this would be a really nice way to make some um, lilies, not just water lilies, but just these amazing, whatever they're called, I've forgotten now. You know which ones I mean with the ginormous um, flower stems that um, um, if they if, if the dust falls onto your clothes, you've had it. Um, they, it makes stains. That those flower lily, uh, lily flowers, I can't remember what they're called. How is everybody now? I'm just gonna have a little read here. Um, all tools available on our website that's it can't share links easily here on my phone internet still down oh the internet's still down oh bless you Emma oh um, oh you must have you must oh thank you Donna Donna stepped in hooray that's what I love thank you Donna there's the rainbow of hope kit um, now um, Oh, Emma is back again. Um, Interflora might sue us. Um, why might they sue us? Because oh, because we're making so many lovely flowers. Yeah, that's it. Stargazer lilies. Thank you, Donna. That's the word I was looking for. Um, yeah. So I mean, this one here, you know, it's not that far off. So you can, um, you can make every flower under the sun with these felt sheets. I just. I just love it it's, um, because they, they look so realistic and they're done so quickly as well. And it is needle felting. Admittedly, you have um, you have sort of an advantage needle felting onto something, but there's no craft police that tells you you can't do that. So just go for it. 
Um, I'm having to mix a bit more of my special mix here. Um, I will staple all these colors onto um, the, um, the sheet in a minute. Just get these down. like using that three needle felting tool for this because you can get um get, be a bit more precise and at the same time actually be quite speedy um so i'm I think i'm gonna stick to that now the three needle felting tool also comes with the needles when you buy it there are medium needles in there but um, they're totally interchangeable so you can screw this open if you are screwing this open the one thing you've got to um, really be careful about is is um, there is a little disc in there which um, I can see ah there it is that little disc if you lose that you're in trouble because that is the disc in effect that stops the needle that are sitting in the tool um, to come on camera no it's not are you gonna focus on this no it's not doing it um, so l um, make sure that that little little disc does not um, get lost because like I say that's the one that stops the needles from um, slipping back into the tool and now I've got it and now it's in a funny way in there as well it normally doesn't fall out so um, get it back in there there and oh yes and the needle are sitting here in the back of the tool you can just take them out put new ones in um, change just use one needle if you wish so you don't have to have three needles in there all the time screw it back up and there you go it's it's quite a nice handle um, especially if you like using a needle felting handle um, I, I'm for one somebody who just uses the needles as they are in my hand I, I've got so used to that that I think by the time needle felted for over 15 years by the time there were handles I I just couldn't break that habit of just using holding the needle but I do like the multi tools I'm, I will um, admit because they just speed things up and if there's anything that speeds my work up I'm always up I'm always up for it um, I'm just one of those impatient crafters if it doesn't happen fast I lose interest I get bored I want to move to the next thing so um, I always admire the people who just keep going and keep going so I'm just going to fill the center a little bit more here um, and I consider that as done. Just a quick job there to pull it off the top. So number two ready. There we go. And then we're finishing off with um, the pink one. I'm just going to move some of these fibers off the felting mat um, while I remember. I've got um, a squeegee that will help and we're also selling some rubber um, brushes but they have been out of stock recently so um, right now the third one and I really want that to be nice and bright still so I'm sticking with my neon pink but you can also get away with um, the um, the bright pink out some of these colors they're not actually dissim that dissimilar from the um, bright pink so I use some of that mix my neon pink into it but because you can't get this yet, this neon color, um, do go with um, the, the berries um, space dyed or with the bright pink, the New Zealand one. And um, you've got all your colors in this in this berries strand. You might just have to pick the ones. I've got quite a lot of wool here that I'm trying to mix. So I'm going to have to decide, take some out there, stick with this. And then again, same old story. Just put it on there dab it down um, and this time I'm going right the way into the center because that is going to be the top layer and whilst there is going to be um, a layer on it it will still be far more visible than the um, two other layers that I've just um, completed there we are Oh, yeah, that 
that's it. Say it with fluff and flowers. But I do like that saying, say it with fluff. Because it's just so us, isn't it? Say it with fluff. Emma put that definitely, definitely. That's one, one of the things we do need to um, bear in mind. Say it with fluff. I like it. It's like, it's a little bit like um, everyone a maker. That wasn't actually, we didn't actually think of that. We, I remember we were sitting with our, with our publisher and we were telling them with, um, Sophie and I were telling him with, uh, with deep passion, how we want to convert the whole world to needle felting and how we think everybody is creative. Um, even though often people don't think they are creative, everybody's creative because creativity is not just in, and how you, how you make and create um, a, a craft project. Cre being creative is also how you, how you um, even with simple things like how you put your food on the plate or how your house is laid out or how you um, design your flower beds if you've got a garden or how you, everything, how you dress every day. All of that is all about creativity because you have, you have choices to make, which color you wear with what and, and, um, how you how your whole house is um laid out and yeah there's just everything um is about creativity it's not just about how well you can paint or how well you can draw and all this sort of stuff anyway we were sitting with our publisher and we were talking to him how we think that everybody's able to make things and he said oh so it's a bit like everyone a maker and we're like oh yeah that's it that's a really good um way of putting it and that's how everyone a maker um, came into um, an hour everyone a maker so it's it's every one not just so it's every one rather than spelled together everyone a maker so say it with fluff is one of these other ones that I do like so I think we will definitely have to make that one of our slogans yeah. right that's number three done um, I also did I I can't remember now if I mentioned that or if I had that conversation with Emma. So we are distinguishing now our live streams, which are stab alongs or tutorials. And the stab alongs is literally it's a really simple project that you could stab along while I'm here nattering on, and you can relax and just do one while I maybe do two or three. So that's a stab along, of which we do have quite a few. And a, um, a needle felting tutorial or anything else that we are um, concocting, it's not just all about needle felting, is, um, is basically where you, you might not do it while I'm doing it, but you can revisit it. And we might also take bits out of that tutorial to keep them as a standalone tutorial to help with a particular project. Right, there we go. That's the top um, layer done now. I'm going to just um, come a bit closer again so you can see me again. There you go. That's number one, number two in the middle, and the first one, um, um, number three that I made first. So now they all um, need to sit on top of each other. And they don't need to sit on top of each other so the petals are actually aligned. They sit on top of each other in a, in a more sort of random way. And um, I actually love it when the, um, when the flowers are sort of more cupped rather than really wide open so we can work on the shaping in a minute but you can see that this is not a bad replication of a lotus flower already and obviously with a lotus flower the center is quite important or a, um, a lily pad um, um, a um, water lily because the lily pad needs to sit under underneath it so the next thing we're going to do is if you look at this one here it has actually got uh, little flower stamens um, sticking up and they are quite um, important and they are actually a lot more symmetrical and a lot more um, distinct in the real flowers in that they sit almost like little soldiers in a row but these are a bit more free so um, to do this first of all I need to create a centerpiece and a centerpiece um, I'm using oh my goodness there's a lot of Angelina fiber in there already I, I'm going to talk about Angelina fiber, but some just snuck into there. So I've got already a bit of a sparkle going on here. So what I'm doing is I'm making a white center. And um, so I'm rolling this into um, a basic shape. Like I've done it lots of times and like you've watched me lots of times. And it's not, it's sort of the size of a large olive, I guess. And I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just felting this together. 
if you don't know but we do this mega mix of needles which i think is really brilliant to try out um because sometimes you, the only way to know which needle to use is to to have them all at hand and try them all out and then you know which one your favorite is because needles is quite a personal thing it's not just that one needle works for all um, a bit like knitting needles some people like metal needles some people swear on bamboo some people want plastic some people want um is there something else i can't wood so um the uh, felting needles are a little bit like that too um i we have a whole um card somewhere well i did have a whole card somewhere that had all the needles on there but i can't find it now anyway doesn't really matter so the this this goes into the center eventually but for now um i'm just going to deck i'm just going to use it so i can put the flower stamen onto it and i've just grabbed a few from our stash um we've got some really cool colors um and we do sell them as well so we have got like a bright pink that one and we've got a peach color goes with the felt in fact they go all really well we've also got white and we've got some really delicate ones they are really great for um, antennae for butterflies or bugs or anything like that um, these are made in ja um, these are Japanese style um, I think they are made in Japan the others are uh, made in the UK and um, I've, I've opted to just go for a mix of the um, pink and peach and what you're doing now is you're putting a couple of these next to each other um, like that and then you bend them in half there like that and then you're oh god I get keep caught at, with this needle and then you're using um, the um, yellow wool that sit, ends up sitting in the middle I've actually used um, our shimmer our yellow um, shimmer but if you wanted to really go for it with um, with sparkle then you could add a little bit of the um, pink Angelina fiber into it it's, it's going to be so nice having these two mixed together and again you just mix as normal now with Angelina fiber it's made to add a bit of sparkle but also um, because the fibers don't strictly felt on their own they often they sort of stick out a bit and that could almost be like um, another sort of Im um, impression of, of um, flower stamen poking out so I'm mixing this make a nice um, yellow mix and then I'm using bits of this and I wrap it I'm gonna, just gonna go small so you can see me small again so I've got my folded um, two folded flower stamen there and then I'm going to wrap them up on the base with my special mix so I've made a little a little parcel here and the idea is that they all that I make several and they sit um, around in a circle on this white uh, ball that I've needle felted. So I'm going to start with this one, stabbing them into the side. You can use wool to um, trap them even more um, and indefinitely take get the right kind of needle. So I've, I've fastened one on here now. So I've got a little ball and now I'm going round the edges. And if you want to be really, really, um, yeah, if you want to do this lots, then you can um, fasten lots of these little um, pods around the edge. If you um, want to speed things up, then don't go too, don't do too many. I'm just going to make another one here. Wrap it with wool around the base, just so that it holds together. Maybe a little bit more because I need to felt it onto the side. But all the main thing is that you leave the um, the actual flower stamen um, pointing up and exposed. I'll put another one on there. Sorry, it's a little bit fiddly. Have to watch your fingers. So you can stab straight straight into it. These are um, they're they're basically cotton um, strands, cotton strings. Um, so you're not going to break your needle on this and um, these are not m um, massively secure on there so I will have to wrap the whole thing up with more wool but I'm just going round the outsides with I have I have four here at a time in fact on the instructions I've only got two at a time but I think that was because we didn't put that many of these in the in the uh, makers box because they are actually really expensive these little flower stamen um, we do sell um, 
40 um, on our website and they're, they're, I can't remember the exact price, but I think they're definitely less than five pounds. So work my way around, another one here. Ideally, you just have every single one and then a second row, oh, that was my finger. So like I said, don't stub yourself. There we go. Put that around, put that there. So now you've got, um, you've got, um, how many have we got there? Three now, but it's obviously it's more. And um, I just do a, another few. And I'm using the, um, the um, pink and the peach color um, I'm sort of alternating them or using both and stuff that down as well. There. And then maybe two more and then that should be enough to just build that sort of um, inside of the um, of the water lily. Oh, hi Faith. It's nice to see you here. Okay, question here. How come the wool in batting is short fibers, but the same wool has long fibers in roving? Sorry, but my brain can't work it out. It's a really good question, actually. So um, you probably hear me talk about merino. The thing is, it is merino, but it's not the same merino. So the, uh, the short fibers that we are using, most of our wool is New Zealand merino. Um, and um, the, the, the key is in that it comes from New Zealand. So the sheep that are bred and um, have lived there for generations in New Zealand, the type of climate they're exposed to, um, the food they eat, and all the rest of it makes the sheep grow a particular type of wool, which is, um, it's a merino breed, but the wool um, is different from, say, for example, the Australian merino because um, it's exposed to a different climate, uh, different food, different temperatures, different everything else, different um, generations of breed of sheep. And so the actual, the, even though it is merino, it is um, and can be a very different fiber from different uh, merinos in different countries. So we also have South American merino and Australian merino. Those are the two that tend to produce the really long staple um, staple is another word for um, um, fibers so it, it's a really long fiber that they produce and that is why merino isn't always merino um, as you might understand it the shortest fibers that we stock and that we know of that um, is a cape merino which is super super short and we often use it in the in the winter for snow because it has got that sort of cotton look um, and um, and also the Portuguese merino um, is is a really short fiber, which is our hair brown and our um, brown. It's like a dark brown uh, Portuguese merino. And so I hope that answers the question. But the longer the fiber, the more suited they are to be turned into wool tops or um, rovings. It's often a more expensive wool because. Um, the fibers are, um, have, is, is finer and the finer the fiber, the more precious the wool. So the coarser the fiber, the, um, the less um, expensive it is. Saying that some of the really short merinos, like for example, the Cape Merino has got a really fine fiber, but because it's really fine and short, it's still not that, um, it's not as, as expensive as a, as a, an Australian merino, especially if you get, you can then get grades and it's measured in microns. So um, the, the smaller the micron, say if you have a 22 or 21, that's a really um, fine um, merino. And then if you, um, if you go up in numbers, say you have a 27 to a 34, that's quite a coarse um, one. I think I've got that right. If I have got it wrong, tell me now so I can say it right on, um, on air before I get put into prison for getting that wrong. Right, I'm going to mix a bit more Angelina fibre into this. Has that answered your question, Faith? I hope it does. 
for future stub along or tutorial? Could we do a sheep or, or a seal or both? I definitely want to do that, Donna. I really want to do that. I want to do more of the of some of the kits that we do as a stub as a stub along. Definitely, we could do as a stub along. We could do a seal. That's perfectly manageable, and we could also do a sheep. That's manageable as well. So that we could do that in an hour. Definitely. So yeah, definitely. Um, Emma, if you could make a note of that because it takes actually quite a long time to uh, plan these um, these stub alongs or tutorials or these well these live streams and um, and then to to think about what they what are we actually trying to do what are we um, con what what um, technique are we going to cover what benefit are we offering to everybody watching us so I think this has probably taken the long longer than um, coloring in the um the flower petals you can adjust some of this by just teasing them out but the, the idea is that it it kind of stays a little bit messy looking and then you've got your water lily here and it's going in the center now I, ideally i wanted that to be a bit brighter yellow so i think using that um sorry i'm just trying to grab some of that uh i'm just trying to grab some of the um different yellows we've got here Maybe I need to put a bit of curly bit in there. Could do that too. That might be quite fun. These are our these are our yellow Lester curls. Oh, there, there's the camera, sorry. Um, so I think I might just put some of these in there. I'll put that on. I'll, I'll tack, tack them onto the sheet as well. Um, because I think they look really fun. I just have a bit of brighter colour there in there to go with that lovely pink. So as I'm stabbing this um, on, I'm actually now stabbing into the shape of the three uh, layers of um, petals that I've made. And, um, and I'm stabbing the shape into there. So what I'm doing is I'm fastening this ball onto it, but I'm also fastening the three petals together now in the process of doing that. And I'm definitely going to use some more of this bright curly stuff. Got a lovely box of all kinds of fibers stuck behind me there so i'm making these a little bit more manageable but i think the texture of it just adds really a nice um something nice into it so these are not the original uh types of fibers that we've used when we put the kit together but i'm really liking this and i like the angelina fibers sort of poking out still around it too I'm just teasing those curls open so that they become a bit more frizzy and um, yeah and I'll just put another one here and then I think that's enough um, wool covered there so the um, the center or the inside is um, is now in place tease these out a little bit if you um, need to have them less sort of sitting in one area now we want to make this um, shape so that it, it comes in a little bit and to do that you lay it on its side and really scrunch it up a bit and then just stab into the outer um, white shape of petals and that way you you sort of closing it up a bit give it a few stabs because the wool cover on the felt sheet will now uh, go the other way and get caught in that ball and that way you can close your um, flower up a little bit and can you see the white that I've just, uh, sorry, the yellow that I've used to fasten into um, the base has actually come out on the other side. So you've got a very scrunched up um, flower here and I actually really quite like them when they're like this. Um, they, they look really realistic that way but you could do lots of them and have them in different stages and um, I guess the final thing is just to um, make the um, the base now. I've got my really green felt here but what I do beforehand um, I'll put you on the large again and I'm going to um, just quickly staple all the fibers onto this piece of card so that um, we don't forget what I've actually used. So we've got here, um, I've used the uh, neon pink, which um, is not available yet, and that's a New Zealand Merino. But I have used um, the um, bright pink New Zealand Merino bat. 
I have used um, the um, this one here, the white that I've used is actually um, that is now this is going to completely confuse your face because this is actually an Australian merino, but it has been turned into um, a bat white. It's actually our bleached white. And that's a bat, merino bat. Um, then um, I think it's really easy to turn um, a longer fiber into a bat, whereas it's much harder to turn a really short fiber into a top because it will sort of just tear apart if you try and keep it long. But if you make it um, like a big sheet, then that's much easier. It holds together much better. I've also used the um, yellow shimmer. That's also a New Zealand um, merino. And I've used the, um, now what do we call this again? Can't remember now, Emma, but it's the Angelina fiber, whatever whatever we call it. It's, um, oh, what's it called? Something pink. Oh, I've, I've got my phone here. I can look it up myself. Just bear with me. Angelina fiber, because we do loads of them, different um, shades. But I like that pink one definitely for the um, for the water lily, Angelina. Let's just see what um, what um, would help if I knew how to spell Angelina. Okay, so Angelina fiber, and it um, we do it in moonstone, which is the white. Looks amazing. Fuchsia pink. That's it. Fuchsia pink. I've added that into it and then I also added the yellow um, Lester curl. It always makes me laugh um, every time. I don't know, I might have told this story before, but my um, oldest daughter, when she was really little, she used to say um, really funny words for things. So she would al she would always get um, Lester and... Um, Lester and... Um, um, oh, I can't remember now. Irish setter and Lester muddled up. So she would say, look, mum, there is a there is a nice little Lester over there. But what she meant was an Irish setter. And um, she would also say, mum, look, that dog has got hop ache. And I never understood what she, uh, for a long time, I didn't understand what she meant. And she means with hop ache, she meant hiccup. So um, all I could see this dog like <gasps> going like this. And she says, well, it it's hop and it aches when you have hop ache. So we always um, we always think it's quite funny to um, to wind her up about this. So anyway, this is our neon pink, which um, isn't um, as we speak today on the 30th. No, no, it's not the 30th. It's on 27th of um, April is not currently listed, but it will be out very soon. There you go. And then the bright pink next to that, you can already get. We've got that. I've had that for um, as long as we exist. And then we've got our bleached white, which um, try and find a piece that isn't contaminated with Angelina fiber. There, it's a lovely, lovely white, um, really pure white, but it is, has been bleached, but you can get the natural white as well. Um, the yellow shimmer, um, which is this one here, it, um, it's sort of, um, it has got a sparkly stuff in there already. So it has got, um, it looks almost like Angelina fiber, looks a little bit finer, the, the sparkle in there. Put that there. Um, the Angelina fuchsia pink, can't mistake that for anything. There. and um, then I've used the Lester curls for the center oh and I haven't put down the berries so I will put that down as well there's the Lester curls really great mix to make um, this water lily or this bright with getting the bright pink really well and then um, as I said I've missed the space dyed um, Australian merino top and that particular one is called berries there we go put some of that on there as well um, I put it so you again got the whole um, perspective on on there the whole strand all the colors staple that on there and then you can see that too there you are so we've got all the colors here now um, again, I will take a photo of them and then um, put them on Facebook and um, eventually put them on, um, um, I don't know where we put them. Where else can we put them, Emma? Oh, yeah, we have actually got on our 
website we have a, um, a page with um, suggested color mixes for different projects so every time we get asked oh I'm making this and I'm making that have you got an idea of what we should use um, we have actually got now under our free tutorials um, a, um, a page where we are collecting all these different um, color combinations so if you ever need to look at them then uh, feel free to do that and um, obviously there's the sheet of felt that will go with it so the next thing is we've got this really bright green um, felt and I've got my lily pad template, got to cut around it, this is the easy bit. Cut around it quickly. How is everybody doing? Um, oh, you're very welcome, um, Faith. And I know there's there are so many, we take it so for granted, I always say that to Sophie, we take it so for granted, um, all the stuff that we know about needle felting that sometimes we... We think we have to, we have to, um, not impress, that's not what I'm saying, but we feel we always have to be that little bit ahead that we actually often forget that a lot of people are starting at the beginning and, and, um, and so we need to remind ourselves all the time that not everybody knows what we are talking about and we might just mention one thing and then suddenly, um, you see these blank faces and people don't, genuinely don't know what you're talking about and I don't want anybody ever, um, to be afraid, um, to ask. I um I used to have a teacher when I was at at school a child at school, and um, he would always say there are no stupid questions there are only stupid answers and I've I've o I always say this and I think he probably regretted the day he said that because um, I only ever asked questions after that that um, he must have been exhausted, but I think it's really good that you uh, give yourself permission to ask questions because nobody's born with the knowledge and um, why why should you know it, and we as soon as you soon as you um, turn into a bit of an expert that's when you start using jargon as well and that is really dangerous because it becomes like a second language and then suddenly people who you're trying to bring on board haven't got a clue what you're talking about right I've done my um, lily pad by using my uh, pin it on technique instead of drawing around it so I've got my lily pad here and I want to decorate it a little bit because it looks a bit boring so um, for this, I actually need some green wool, which of course I knew there was something else I needed. What do I need? Oh, I need some forest. I need some forest green and I need some um, some yellow, which is a good job because I think I used that for the flowers, for the roses. So I should have some of this ready available here. There we are. Only tiny bits are required. And it's really just to um, set off um, that really, really bright green thing. Um, so you're more naturally putting um, a bit of a pattern on there, if you can see that here. So you're literally drawing, you're not covering the whole f um, sheet. And the way to do that is by going around the edges first, almost like putting an, an edge around it. Yeah. Just drawing the edge with that green. And if it's not um, entirely even, that's even better because, um, as I said before, nothing's ever that even. So just do a rough um, line on the outside. I don't know these things off by heart. I only know it because I looked at, um, at the real thing. So this is my interpretation of a real um, water lily leaf. If you feel it needs to look different then um, go for it there's there is no right rate way this is just um, Pam said that yesterday actually funny enough she said um, it always looks with her it always looks like she's making it up um, and um, with us it always looks like um, we are not making it up yes well we have we've been at that stage of making it up before we turn things into kits so we you know we sit for hours and hours designing these different um, creations for you guys um, so you don't have to sit there and um, and study um, what the real thing looks like um, and we do it because we love it we love looking at nature and we love looking at what's out there and we love um, yeah just d d everything that we do tells a little story and um, I think that's how Sophie and I have always worked and so it's very rare well it has happened where we, we where we wanted to do the same thing but we're grown up grown up enough to say no you do that no you do that um because we do feel um well we have so much in common in terms of our love for nature and our 
um, yeah, just the things we like. So the next thing is you're just drawing random lines from the center and they don't even need to come all the way. They're just sort of like patches in, in some cases. Felt these down um, all around. Bearing in mind, not much of that leaf is actually going to be visible. It's just so that you've got something down here. And, um, and then you add a little bit of yellow into it as well. And again, it's just to lift that uh, leaf up a little bit, just to give it a little bit of texture and a little bit of um, variation, variegation, whatever you want to call it, because it's not just a dead pan, bright green um, leaf. There is actually something else happening here. Oh, oh, Faith, you're very kind. Faith is saying that she's more knowledgeable now, um, thanks to us, and that's that's great. We really love we really love that. But we are learning things every day as well, and that's how it needs to be. I think my grandfather once said um, he he will stop learning the day he takes his last breath. And um, to me, and you know that that just goes to show you um, if you've got that attitude that there's always new stuff that you can learn then I think that's that keeps you young at heart as well because um, nobody is ever at the end of knowing everything. Um, yeah, it's really, really nice. There, so a bit of yellow in the mix. Just a few patches here and there. And then as if you haven't guessed, um, we're fastening this leaf onto the flower by um, obviously felting it on. So to do this, you can actually turn it round and now stab into the um, flower. You can add a little bit of wool on the outside if you want to speed up the process. This Angelina fiber is amazing. It's just on, on this green, you can't see this in the, on the screen, but on this green, this pink Angelina fiber has turned into a deep purple. It's really nice how um, the color, because it's iridescent, but it's also, oh, there's a word for it. I can't think of it now. It's iridescent and ir, um, oh, there's another word. I can't think of it. Anyway, this is basically to fasten the leaf onto your flower. You can adjust your flower after that again. And, um, oh, it looks really nice. There you go. You can wear this as a brooch. And, um, and this one has come off for some reason. It's been manhandled a lot, but I'm just going to um, fasten it on with that brooch pin. There. And then there were two. There you are. Pretty much the same. Um, and I think if you made lots of them, they look really nice. Um, whether you put them, I can't actually tell which one is which now. Oh, this, is the, this is the original one. This is the slightly more vibrant one. Um, I really like it when, when the flower is when they're when they're sort of half closed so you can put them into a nice shape straighten out every single flower um, petal if you want and um, and have them in a more natural position um, so that's the one we made today and um, I hope you enjoyed this what um, is there anything else um, yes Yes, I know, Donna, they're just ideas, the seal and the sheep, but they are, because they're such um, simple projects, they're definitely on, on our horizon. There's just so much to share. So um, I hope that um, that you've had a really good time. Um, I certainly did. And on Friday, I'm um, really excited to um, introduce you to the fawn. There she is. Um, she's She's got... Um, She's got quite floppy legs, but um, yeah, they do have big legs, big eyes, big ears, um, and uh, spots on the back. Um, she's a fair size, so sits comfortably in my arm. And then um, with it, you will get, this is part of the maker's box, you'll actually get some real lichen to uh, build a lovely nest so that she can sit on it and um, for decoration. And it's that beautiful sort of lichen color. And then, um, in the fairy box it's all about pansies i will be totally honest i think i got um i got the flowers muddled up a bit because after this is the is the um 
forget me not fairy and i think forget me nots are out now and pansies probably are fine out now but um, maybe more natural a bit further on but anyway pansies it is next month all through the may and um i'm working this week i'm working on giving her a little bit more decoration so by friday you will see what you can actually make i will give you a little tip that on friday if you are um, making a pansy to go with the um with a um fairy i will just tell you that this pansy is not needle felted i've cheated but you can cheat too and i um i i tell you on friday how you're cheating but it's um it's made from felt but not needle felted so there's a little bit of a riddle you can work that one out if you like but the good news is you have got three days to get your hands on the sleeping fox and he's been an absolute star in our subscription box this month and i think it's just that he he oozes such um chilledness and relaxedness that we could all um um yeah take great example by and um just make a little snoozy snoozy fox there and also the spring fairy is still available um as a subscription box with the fairy boxes you don't actually need to sub subscribe you can just buy a one-off box but you do save yourself 20 percent if you're subscribing remember with all of our subscription boxes you can skip boxes you don't need to have them every month um we don't tie you in a contract you can unsubscribe anytime too so um oh i need to make another chart but i can do that all on my own and you can um look at it um on um on our facebook page i will share it later and um perhaps we it there will be oh yeah there will be a space on our um our website as well so but i won't bore you with that now because you've seen there's not much color on the on the leaf so i will just do that finish that off and i will post it on um on facebook so i hope that everybody's had a good time um oh pauline you can't wait can't you is that is that the fall you can't wait well that's so nice um i think my postie has nicked mine oh, oh no oh we've had oh yeah this is one last thing that i will say um the post service is extremely unpredictable at the moment we get um, people saying oh i never expected it to come like a day after i ordered it it all depends where you where you live i think that's probably the best way to put it that every single um, area in the uk has got its own challenges to deal with in terms of staff shortage how much mail there is and how they are plowing their way through it our local postman has said that they have got 20 percent less staff and 80 percent more work and so they are they are absolutely shifting mountains at the moment to try and get things out to you so by all means message us and we will let you know whether um, a delivery attempt has been made because that's the only thing we can tell you we know it's on route um we are looking in off into offering a tracked service um so that you can actually follow the tracking of of it um of the parcel um yourself it is a lot more expensive and we've always been really proud of keeping our postage rates down and royal mail has been one of the most reliable um postal um services that we have used but we are always listening to um what people are saying and we're looking into um getting a tracked service um online so that you can have it uh, that option just just for your peace of mind and you can literally trace um, where your parcel is and you get a notification when it's going to be delivered. We don't currently offer that, but we are looking into um, getting that sorted. So just bear with us. If it's possible, we will do it. Um, and Elizabeth says, thank you for your lovely information tutorial. I'm looking forward to learning more um, in the next tutorial. Brilliant. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's really lovely to say. And um, um, wow, poor post this. Yes absolutely i'm sure my fox will be um with me soon we will we can look yours up faith um i'll get in touch with you and um and tell you um whether it's whether there has been a delivery attempt or whether it is still on route but anyway it's all gonna get to you eventually and i will be back on friday so tune back in and um share and like our youtube channel tell your friends and uh, get your friends into needle felting because it it makes you happy makes us happy and you can all come and share our happy place so until then um see you soon stay safe stay positive and hang in there bye